It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And we've got some history in this battle of AFL alumni. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Los Angeles Chargers. And it's all up next. Let's go, baby. It was only opened in 2020, but quickly became one of the league's most recognizable venues. You're looking at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. Welcome to another entertaining matchup, folks. Kate Scott, Brock Heward on the call in this one. And Brock, got a couple of running backs down on the field. You can really take over their offenses when they get in the groove. And I think that's going to be the ultimate goal of both of these offenses, right? I mean, there's just no confusion about it. They want to get their bell cow in that groove and get them going. Find that rhythm where they're ripping off chunk yardage, run after run, and then just keep on feeding that beast. In a game like this, Whichever offense could get that rhythm and run game going first is likely going to be your winner. To kick off, here's Ryan Stonehouse. And here we go from L.A. Darius Davis to return it. He stopped on the return at the 27. So now out comes the Charger offense for their initial drive of the game. They'll be let out by the fifth-year pro who can really fill up a stat sheet, Justin Herbert. True story. First time I saw Justin Herbert at a Pac-12 media days, I thought, that can't be Justin Herbert. That guy looks like a defense alignment. He is massive. But then you watch him play, and you realize he's one of those six-foot-five, six-foot-six guys that's the athlete of a six-two. The way that he moves so effortlessly. The way that rocket arm can throw the ball all over the field. Been hyper, hyper productive statistically. Kind of like that Fouts guy that wore the lightning bolt before him on any given... Caught him deep behind the line. Oh, the ball is out! And no turnover. It's going to stay with the offense. Wow, that was fast. Might be time to take a step back, and we just started this game. Maybe take a couple of deep breaths. Very first snap, and he nearly gave it away. That could have mentally taken them out of this game. Yeah, for the player, a little bit easier to respond. For the coaches on the sidelines... That drives them crazy to see the ball on the ground. And we know how precious this ball is in this game. Got to take care of it. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. This offense may want to try and disguise their run a little bit. I don't know if it's the old lineman's stance. I don't know if it's a cadence. I don't know what it is. But after two straight plays going backwards, this defense is all over them. Third and long for him here. He lets a heater go deep, middle of the field. Well, they had the look, certainly didn't shy away from it, but couldn't connect, and now they're stuck facing fourth down. Gonna have to wait a little longer for his first catch of the game. So that brings up fourth and long. Can't cover it much better than that really well-covered Kate on that play. There just simply was not a window for him to sneak that throw in. Punt team is on now, and they get this away. Duke's at a one-stop. And before that return amounts to much, they bring him down. So here come the Titans now to get their first drive of the game. And they'll be let out by a player who had a string of wins to end his 2023 season. Now in his sixth year, Mason Rudolph. Kid, I think a lot of us around the NFL wondered, was there more in the tank? Was Mason Rudolph's career on fumes? And then he just ignited those Steelers down the stretch. Winning three straight games, making the playoffs, yeah, and keeping that streak of 500 seasons alive up in Pittsburgh. You know what he really showed? He really showed that when given protection, the guy can still spin a football. Good starting field position for the Titans. They've got it first and 10. Off the play fake, he's going to throw. That's going to be caught, Tony Pollard. And he's out of bounds just past, looks like, the 40-yard line. Kate, I don't know why every once in a while I'll get these little flashbacks, but a little play like that just flashes me back to the preseason, my first preseason, when one of the veteran QBs said, hey, Brock, whatever you do, just find completions. You will never go broke taking a profit. Go get a completion. They're at a premium in this league. Oconquo brings it in. And he gets him around six there. Alohi Gilman up from the secondary for that tackle. Well, he saw his guys pick up the blitz. Well, he felt them pick it up anyway if he wasn't looking at them. But with their effort on his behalf, I think this QB felt owed to them. And the group up front to find somebody to get a completion so that effort up front wasn't in vain. Looking to throw on third and one into the hands of Okonkwo. 
And that short gain is enough for a new set of downs. Well, they got him down before he could do any more damage in terms of yards. And that's no easy job, mind you, tackling a big tight end. But the main damage had already been done. He kept this drive going by getting beyond the line of gain. First and ten from a yard shy of midfield. They'll run here with Tajay Spears. And he scampers ahead and gets two on the carry. Now after the run, we see some trainers headed out for an injured player who was shaken up. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. From the 47. That throw finds Okonkwo. He's got to gain a six there. Cam Hart's up for the tackle that time. You know, I'm really not sure if that was an intentionally brave play to challenge double coverage or just simply not seeing the two defenders. Either way, what a tremendous throw and catch that earns some momentum. They'll put one of the tight ends in motion. On third down, Pollard. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Ooh, I like that call. I really, I really like it with those sticks. You can keep them on the sidelines and you get more than enough to get the first down. Markers reset, ball at the 37. Back to pass on first and 10. This one finds Boyd. And they take him down right along the 30. Second and three now. From the gun, they go with Pollard. Jukes one defender. And they bring him down at the 18-yard line. Pickup of 12 on that play. And the Titans will have a first down. It's got to be so demoralizing as a defense when you go up against a running back who just keeps those legs churning like a piston in an engine. And that effort's contagious. This entire offense is getting a boost, and he busts those tackles. It was there, but he couldn't hang on. That's incomplete. No luck finding his receiver that time. So it's second down coming up. Making it harder than it needs to be right there. Just get the catch first, guarantee some yards, and then worry about escaping the defenders and getting upfield. Couldn't connect on first. It's second down. Throwing from the gun here. Has it down close. And that's a Tennessee touchdown. Well, Brock, we normally talk about complimentary football at some point every week. So how about the way they've begun this one, huh? Force some punts and then cash it in for six on their opening drive. Do we do it every game? It feels like it. Almost every game, yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. Because that's what the NFL is about. We all know the margins are so small in this league. And the team that typically plays the complimentary ball is typically the team that wins. Nick Folk now for the extra point. The point after splits the uprights. And the Titans will jump out to a 7-0 lead. Stonehouse now to kick this one away. On the return, here comes Davis. And this will give them decent field position. The return gets out to the 30.
First and ten now from the 30. Beginning on the ground here with Dobbins. It looks like we can call it about four yards in the end. Tackled there by Jerome Baker. You know, this is an offense that will emphasize the ground game at different points of each and every contest. And as long as they can reliably get gains like this, it's not going to change anytime soon. Second and six coming up here. Running it again with Dobbins. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. You know, Coach gets in that QB's headset, probably told his offense and his QB, listen, I don't want to see a third down on this possession. Or something kind of like that. Whatever version he told him, it worked. They're now set for first and ten. Again, they'll run with Dobbins. And he drives that front backward on a gain of four. You know, okay, these are some of the little hidden plays in a game. Right? Doesn't look like a whole lot on the stat sheet. But A, it gets a good yardage. B, it sets up your play action. And C, most importantly, keeps that defense guessing. Second and six coming up here. To the air this time. Herbert. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop him. And that pushes him back. Third down coming up. Open and frame of the game and two times already. These defenders have got home for a home run sack. To get their way, a lot more teammates are going to join them on the stat sheet with the takedown before this one ends. Let's see what they went with on third down. Herbert. Got a man. Palmer has it. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. <laughs> I'll tell you, that is a humbling moment to see a completed third down pass actually go backwards instead of towards the sticks. So once again, J.K. Scott out to punt it away. Jaquan Jackson deep for the Titans. Got 49 on his first punt. This one looks even longer. And he calls for the fair catch, and he's got it at the 14-yard line. So no return on that punt. And the Titans will get set to take over. They're out and set, first and ten. They'll start this one on the ground with Pollard. And he breaks even, but that's it. Brought down at that line of scrimmage. Sent to the ground by Khalil Mack. No progress on first down, and that'll bring up second and ten. Made it all look so simple, didn't he? That linebacker sorting right through the traffic, finding the runner. That's instincts come to life. They're going play action. Taking his shot. Deep down the field it goes. And disaster averted. He knocks away the deep ball. Incomplete. His first target doesn't lead to his first catch. So now it's going to be third and long. You know, I don't fault that look at all, Kate, downfield. It was just an excellent defensive play to deny him the ball and knock it away. That is good on good. To the air. Third and long. That's caught for the first. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. Give him 24 on that play. And that'll be a Tennessee first down. The analytics will tell you a handful of these kind of plays per game and your odds per drive of scoring go way up. New set of downs for him at the 38. Boyd will go in motion right. First and ten, it's Pollard. And they've got him behind the line for a big loss. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, 
He's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. Shotgun snap, looking to throw. He'll get this complete to Westbrook Akine. And it's a nice game, but still not enough for the first. Yeah, these end cuts maybe aren't the hardest throws from a degree of difficulty, Kate, but it does take some courage as a quarterback to throw into congested spaces, but it can pay big dividends. Short yardage situation here. It's third and two. Now they'll throw out of the gun. Complete beyond the marker. And they can't jump to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. This one goes for an even 25 yards. And the Titans will have a first down. I'm not sure how this defense let that guy slip through him like that. On third down, nonetheless, he took that snap as an opportunity. And man, did he make an impact play. All right, I'll set up now. First and ten. Throwing now, off play action. We had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose, incomplete. Defender's not going to be thrilled. The catch was almost made on his watch, but more importantly, he breaks it up. Gives him a chance to do a little giant after the play. Let's the other guy know he roughed him up and cost him that catch. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. the play fake he'll throw brought in close to the eight touchdown Tennessee the Titans get another six to make this a 13-0 game Calvin Ridley with the touchdown so Brock this offense looking sharp here in the first half as they extend their lead you know and when things are going well sometimes you really just get into a groove and this is a unit that's putting the pieces together Folk on now to try the point after. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Titans drive out to an early 14-0 lead. Stonehouse now to kick this one away. On the return, here comes Davis. He stopped on the return at the 27. Drive starts out with a first and ten. They run the counter with Dobbins. And they had that one contained right at the line. It's Kenneth Murray on the tackle. Call it no gain on that run, and they face second and ten. You want to see the term read and react with a little video in the football dictionary? That's it. Second and ten need to get some positive yardage here. A give right side to Dobbins. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. That was the perfect play call for that particular situation. Gave him enough to pick up a first with some room to spare. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. Herbert now. He's on the move. He's going to tuck it and run. And they'll make the stop up at the 46-yard line. Oh, man, those defensive players hate slippery quarterbacks. Near impossible 
to keep him hedged in or corral him behind the line there. He evades him long enough to turn a potential loss into positive yardage. Second and three now. Shotgun handoff for Dobbins. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. That run's not going to turn many heads, but at the end of the year, I promise you, if you average over five yards a run, you can be a pro bowler. First and ten, ball set up at the 48. Changing things up, they're going to throw now. Able to hit Palmer, complete. And they're going to be down close to the 35 as he goes out. It's a gain of 12 there. And the Chargers will have a first. Kid, I can't tell you how good that is. Anticipating the outcut, having the ball on the way before the receiver's head even turns, he puts it on him so that receiver can easily get out of bounds for the nice game. Herbert on first down. Has him on the quick hitter. And this is down to the 28 before the defense halts it. The goal of running that drag route is to get it to him for at least a minimal gain with space to add after that. They picked up a good chunk and there was nearly room to add even more. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Dobbins gets it off the option. And he's dropped just short of the marker, maybe a yard away. You know, kid, I like to call these body blows. Body blows. you got to be committed to running the football. Even if it doesn't move the chains, I guarantee you that wear and tear will pay dividends later. Third and a lone yard coming up. From the pistol, it's Herbert. And he will score. Touchdown, Los Angeles. The Chargers make it a one-score game. Quite the strike to his tight end, and the patience he showed waiting for that to break open. That was awesome, and it's rewarded with six. You know, it should be simple, Kate, right? In, in philosophy, it should be simple. Just plaster that big guy. Throw bodies at him in coverage, but stopping a tight end near the end zone is anything but simple with how deceptively good they are as route runners and finding that football when it arrives. Now it's Cameron Dicker on for the extra point. Right down the middle. It's good. And the Chargers chop the lead in half. It's down to seven. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Julius Chestnut to return. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Trying the inside handoff to Pollard. This is ahead for about five. Brought down on the effort by Derwin James. Give him five on that carry, bringing up second and five. A humble five to six yard gain on the ground. Not a huge gain, not a game changing play by any means, but one that keeps you on schedule and takes some of the starch out of that front seven. From the 33 on second down. Pass caught by Ridley. And he's going to get this up to the 45 before he's brought down. Pickup of 12 on that play. And that'll be a Tennessee first down. Up the middle, here goes Pollard. He's able to drive that pile about a yard. 
That's Denzel Perryman in on the stop. Only gets a yard there to make it second and nine. Well, now this defense is in the driver's seat, Kate. Right? When you make a stop like that on first down, now it's your discretion of just how aggressive you want to be following that play up. Here we go, second and nine. Okonkwo brings it in. He gets it forward for a gain of three. Stopped by Dayon Henley. This defense didn't give up contain there, Kate. That was an instance where the more exciting plays were taken away downfield. And even looking to the tight end wasn't going to net them much. Third and six for them to figure out now. They'll try and throw it here. He'll dump this one off to his running back complete. And he's going to be brought down after reaching the 43. Eight yards on the gain, and the drive continues forward. Every time I see one of those angle routes, I think back to my day one install. Rookie minicamp in the NFL. Texas, angle route. 49ers of the 80s, they were making hay with it then, and the running back still doing it to this day. Play action on first down. And he's just going to get rid of this one. Smart move there. When you saw the field, it's going to be second down. Still sticking with the passing game. Into the hands of Okonkwo. We'll have him gain about a handful there. Christian Fulton, the one to bring him down. Hey, Kay, you know this from covering the Seahawks calling their preseason game. When Pete Carroll was there, if he said it once, he said it 100 times. Stay on top, stay on top, stay on top. You'll give up a short little out route like that, but just stay on top of the deep threat. Shotgun now on third down. Has his man, it's Ridley. And he's brought down at about that 27-yard line. So that connection for a first will bring us to the end of the first. It's a 14-7 game. We're back to SoFi right after this. We're ready to go with the second quarter, and it's Titans football. They're looking at yet another first and ten on this drive. Off the play fake, he's going to throw. This one finds Boyd. And he's brought down for a loss. Well, there was never a play in any playbook I ever saw designed for a lost yardage play when you throw the ball. But if there's any solace, at least it was first down. A couple more chances to make up for it. All right, here we go. Second down. Throwing it again here. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. And he's caught after a game of about two. That's Denzel Perryman in on the stop. Well, that right there, Kate, that is the epitome of trust. And trust in your big physical tight end. Throwing his way into double coverage. You may question the decision when the ball leaves his hands, but it's tough to question when it produces results like that. Throws into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted! Reaches the 40! And the Chargers take over inside the 35 after the interception and a spirited return. I know he started the play as a defender, but gosh, he looked good, didn't he? Running it back, he looked like a receiver navigating on that return. The way he saw the field, he baited obstacles, and he chewed up yardage in the open space. Wouldn't well, make those offensive coaches and teammates proud. We've seen defensive players get touches on occasion, and I think he just gave himself maybe a look on that side of the ball down the road. Ball at the 33 for first down. Herbert with a blitz coming. Got a man. Palmer has it. He's forward. Gets a couple of yards. Amani Hooker with the tackle. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Chuck. 
chuck there to haul it in. And it's a nice little chunk here, six yards. Jarvis Brownlee there to make that play. Third down, one yard to go. They go play action. Here's Herbert. He has the first over the middle. And he's able to get it to the two before the stop. They rip off a big chunk of field, and it sets him up with first and goal. This entire play, Kate, depends on how well he can separate from his man. You get man-to-man -man coverage, it's really about two things, separation and trust. Because QBs want to throw it before he breaks, that's the trust, and then they got to believe that that separation can create the big play down the field. They'll break the huddle and come up on first and goal. Dobbins. And they'll bring him down after a pretty short game. Give him a couple on the run, and it's now second and goal. Okay, all right. There's a little progress on first and goal. You keep it safe, you push a little closer, and now you're set up for what you want to do on second down. They're lining up on the doorstep, second and goal from inside the one. Shotgun snap to Herbert. And he finds him in the end zone for an L.A. touchdown. The Chargers parlay the interception into points. They were throwing for it there, and they didn't care who knew about it, Bronk. And it turns out, hey, nothing was going to stop them either. Yeah, there's something about an empty formation. You are declaring to a defense, other than QB draw, this ball is going to be in the air. But at the same time, you also force the defense's hand. There's only so many coverages they can play, and they just exposed them. Dicker on now for the PAT. The point after splits the upright. And the Chargers tie things up at 14. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. On the return, here comes Tajay Spears. And in the end, he's able to get it to what used to be a touchback. It's at the 25 after the return. The Titans and Mason Rudolph about ready to get back to work on offense. And he sure has put on that chef's hat to dice up their defense early in this one. Quite the appetizer that he's prepared to what could be a great overall performance. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Interception last drive doesn't deter them. They're going right back to the air. And they'll manage to contain him after about a six-yard pickup. Cam Hart's up for the tackle that time. It takes a certain level of fearlessness, craziness, to work over the middle of the field in this league. You're fighting through guys as you go, and all the while you know you could take a lick at any time. From the 31. That throw finds Okonkwo. He's descended upon quickly and dropped after it looks like a yard gain. Alohi Gilman up from the secondary for that tackle. The Chargers into a nickel set, third down. They get to Pollard from the gun. And this one gets to the 33-yard line before it stops. Only a yard that time. It forces fourth and one. It's 
So now on to punch, somebody whose excellent football adventure began growing in San Dimas. It's Ryan Stonehouse. And he gets his guys a few yards before they bring him down on the return. And that punt gets up to 59 yards. And the Chargers take possession. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. Good little rip there. Looks like about six. Jarvis Brownlee there to make that play. A nice six-yard pickup. They're going to have second and four. Fans love the long ball in baseball. It's like they got the home run derby. But you know what? Talk to managers, and they will tell you small ball can win, too. Singles and doubles, you add them up, you can win a lot of baseball games. Football coaches will tell you, you get runs of that length, it may not be a home run. It may not score points, but it can do some serious damage. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. I know from the position of the quarterback, Kate, sometimes you hand that ball, you put it in the belly of the running back, and you send him right into the teeth of a buzzsaw. You can feel it from the jump, and that call from the defense, well, it came at the perfect time. Herbert now to throw on third. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. Tough one to retain through that hit. And that leaves them with fourth and five. Yeah, th this game, you just can't make it harder than it needs to be. Just get the catch first. Guarantee your yards, and then worry about escaping defenders after the catch. Fourth down, and on comes the punt team, and the kick's away. And he'll get under this one and make the fair catch at the 19-yard line. We don't get a return out of that punt. And it's going to be their football coming up. They're out and set. First and ten. Throwing from the gun here. Has the connection to Ridley. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. That's a 38-yard play for him to move the six. You know, Kate, we often talk about flipping the field in special teams, right? A, a kick return, a good punt. Well, an explosive play like that does the exact same thing. Look at the difference in field position. By hitting on that shot, you've totally flipped the field and the tone of this drive. So the big play gets him inside the opposing 45. Brock with a new set of downs to boot. To throw here on first down. Pass taken in by Pollard. He gets it ahead, winds up with about three. Alohi Gilman up from the secondary for that tackle. You know, these running backs today, they are so versatile. It doesn't matter if they're running it, or in this case, same principle applies on routes out of the backfield. You don't get somebody close to him, that throw is headed his way. Here's second and seven. This one falls incomplete. Looking for his wide receiver there. And that means third down coming up. Yeah, I know nobody's perfect. And all you have to do is listen to me and how many words I screw up. <laughs> But you certainly expect those throws of that length to be 100%. They've got to be borderline automatic in this offense. Throwing on third and long. That one is incomplete. Couldn't hang on through the contact. Just couldn't hang on through the contact. And now they're staring at a fourth down. You know, it's a point of emphasis in practice each and every week, no matter where we go. How are we going to attack the coverage on third down? Well, the a wrong play off that call sheet that time. Hunter takes the field on fourth down, and he sends this one flying. And it sails out of bounds. That's a good kick. Got all the way down to what looks like the 10-yard line before leaving the field. Drive starts out with a first and 10. Straight ahead, here's Dobbins. And that's good for a gain of five. Mike Edwards up to make that tackle. First down play, Nets him five. It's going to be second and five. 
You gain that kind of yardage in the run game, and you're going to gain the trust of your offensive coordinator. Plays like that, runs like that, set the table for everything else in the playbook. Herbert has him on the quick hitter. And they take him down at the 24-yard line. A nine-yard gain and good for a first down. Play action now for Herbert. And oh, someone stepped in. It's intercepted. And the Titans will have it right at the opposing 30 after the interception and that return on top of it. He was trying to fit it into a window in the zone coverage, but by the time he let it go, boy, Brock, that lane had closed and someone was there to make a play on now, it. Now, what you're trying to do in zone coverage defensively is make that quarterback see a window that isn't actually there. And as soon as he takes the bait and sends it over the middle, well, you got one, two, three defenders all there in range to go pick it off. First and 10 now from the 30. Airing it out to start this drive. Couldn't connect right side. It's incomplete. He can't hang on to the pass. And we'll see what they do here on second down. That drop ruins the payoff to a well-designed play. It got a man open. It beat the coverage. That's a call they can revisit in the future with hopefully a much better job finishing the catch. They give to Pollard on the option. He's contained at the line for no gain. That's Denzel Perryman in on the stop. No gain on the play, and they still need 10 now on third down. These linebackers are today, they are so quick. They're so twitchy. You don't get a body on them in a hurry, they're going to stick you right at the line of scrimmage. to the air, third and long. And it's incomplete, and that's gonna bring up fourth down. So many coaches love third downs, and they practice them so much, Kate. Why? Because they're the money down in the NFL. Whether it's a close game already out of hand, coaches know, gotta execute and convert on these third downs. So the Titans left with a fourth down, and we're gonna see Nick Folk after the try. It's from the right hash, 46 yards. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And that's going to break our tie and give him a three-point advantage. You'd expect him to make most of those attempts from this distance, but it's never a lock. So they'll happily take this and finish off the drive with points. Stonehouse now to kick this one away. On the return, here comes Davis. Returns looking good so far. And it's a nice return here. They'll tackle him shy of the 35. Here's first and 10 from the 34. Looking to throw here and shake off that previous INT. Hauled in by Dobbins. And he's going to be brought down at the 42. These intermediate gains, that's the wheelhouse for these two to connect on. Start the series off well. And it sure keeps the defense on its toes in case they try to load up and just simply cover the receivers. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Now an inside handoff to Dobbins. Past midfield at the 45. And he takes this all the way down to the 24-yard line. It's a pickup of 34 yards. And it brings up an L.A. first down. No frills, nothing fancy. That was just a good old offensive line dominated in the trenches. And that sprung him to get to the second level and beyond. Okay, 
First down, and they go right back to him. And the defense is all over this one for a big loss. This is one of those plays that I wish we had the huddle mic'd up, Kate, because I can assure you that offensive line in their own way is telling that running back, sorry, we did not give you any chance. Back to the line they go. It's second down. Takes off right out of the read option. They'll cobble together a yard there. Legereus Sneed there for the stop. It's only a gain of one. Back-to-back -back misfires on the ground, and they're facing third and long. It may not show up as much on the old stat sheet, just a short little QB run, but what that does, Kate, is so important. Keeps that defense honest, and in particular, those defense alignment, those cleats in the ground, they're not just coming after you in the pocket. Now they've got to think about you as a runner as well. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. Pursue, pursue, pursue. It's why they do these drills all the time, Kate. You do them through the offseason, you do them through training camp, you do them in the regular season. Because when a defense plays with tremendous pursuit, you force fourth downs just as they did. So on fourth down, on comes Cameron Dicker and the Chargers for a field goal try. It's 44 yards here from the left hash. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And we're all tied up now in the first half. I know. I know. Sometimes we take kickers for granted, but I'll tell you what. You can't hit that any better. Never even flirted with an upright. That was right down the middle. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. Here's Chestnut on the return. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. The Titans headed back out on offense. Their quarterback returning to the field now. And on that last drive, Brock, he crossed a notable threshold in passing yards for the season. Always nice when you can reach one of those plateaus to look back on after the year is over. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. They send a receiver in motion right. Look at this. The wideout gets it to start this drive. And into a sea of bodies he goes. Looks like they'll get about three out of it. Well, that's a tough one because you could see the beginnings of what looked like an explosive play. Let's give some credit here, Kate, to the defense. A great job to bottle him up before it came to fruition. Second down now, seven to go. On the carry, this is Pollard. And once again, he doesn't manage much before getting brought down. They got two yards there, and that leaves them with third down and five. Tight end in motion right. Third down from the gun. Got him deep behind the line. Oh, the ball is out! And this is going to stay with the offense as he makes the recovery. You know what? Everybody on the field is going to make mistakes. The key is to clean that up as quickly as he can. Ball carrier loses possession, but he doesn't panic and lose composure. Instead, well, he hops on the ball and he saves the day. Here comes the Titans punting unit. Darius Davis returning for the Chargers. And he's certainly been staying busy. Once again, he's out to punt and sends this fly. And some textbook work covering that punt. It is stopped after almost nothing on the return. It's a 61-yard punt that time. And it'll be their football. Here's first and 10 from the 34. They'll give to Dobbins out of the shotgun. And they'll take him down at the 43-yard line. 
Even though that run did not net them a first down, I can promise you this, Kate. I promise you. I know how it works. They're going to circle that one. They're going to remember that one. And when they need some key yards on the ground, they'll come back to that call later. In a good spot here, second and inches. This is Dobbins. And they'll make the stop up at the 46-yard line. Give them three on that game. And the Chargers will have a first. That's certainly a spot where you could be more aggressive, Kate, if you wanted to take your shots. But some coaches, even the bolder ones, will take the safe play first when they get it from time to time. No third down required now. Herbert on first down. Short pass brought in. And he gets it across midfield and into Titans territory. We're at the two-minute warning now from SoFi. It's the Chargers, who have second and four. From the 48, he throws a bullet down the right sideline. And that's going to be knocked away incomplete. I'll tell you what that deflection right there, Kate, tells me. That defense was following and reading the quarterback's eyes. Knew exactly where that throw was going. And it takes a little bit of intuition, a little bit of feel. He's able to get his hands on it and knock it out of bounds. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Herbert from the gun. Complete beyond the marker. And he's able to reach the 40 on that play. And that play goes for eight yards, and it keeps this drive moving. Chargers hurrying to the line as the seconds tick away. Here's Herbert, first and ten. Completed over the middle. And he's going to be taken down a yard shy of the 25. It's a 13-yard play, and that's enough for the first. You know, they really love that drag route because he's one of those guys that can count on not only to make the catch, but create after the catch. If they don't close on him quickly, he can add a lot of yards before someone tracks him down. Throwing on first is Herbert. And that's going to be brought in. Touchdown, L.A. The Chargers get some late points and the lead. All right, partner, what do you think? Was that a design read, or did he just see space and he was reacting more on the old quarterback instinct there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think yes on both of them. And that play happens so fast that it really is instincts on both sides. Dicker on now for the PAT. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Chargers break that tie and now lead by seven. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. On the return, here comes Spears. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. The Titans and Tony Pollard headed back out there offensively. And he has run rough shot over them in this opening half. Pretty sure this is the exact kind of start that he was hoping to have here. drive will start out with a first and ten. They'll come out throwing. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. And he'll get taken down after advancing this to the 37. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. From the 37. 
Boyd hauls it in. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Tennessee calling its second timeout now. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. Ball on the 45, first and 10. They'll throw it. He's got it to him yet again, and that one is caught. And he pushes this down to the 42 before going down. The Titans call their third and final timeout. And that's all they've got for what little remains of this half. They'll head up, first and 10 from the 42. He'll throw it yet again. Well, the pressure nearly got to him, but still a good play defensively as that one falls incomplete. This is why we hear about closing speed so often when you evaluate players. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released and alter that throw. Second and ten now. That won't be caught outright. It's incomplete. This one intended for the running back. So they're left facing third and long. That is normally a gimme for this offense, these short throws. But the defense, well, they had just enough influence on that play to force the incompletion. Here he is on third and long. Complete, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Trying to find his tight end. And that brings up fourth and long. You know, there's not a lot of tight ends who are true weapons this far down the field. Not a lot of cover guys who can match up with them in terms of size. They tried to get it to him in a spot where he could win it. No connection to be made. On is the punt team, and away goes the punt. And this one's out of the side of the end zone. Was trying to get that precise aim, but he was off the mark. It's going to be a touchback. The clock reads 24 seconds now as the final drive of this half begins. First and 10, Herbert. He's got a man left. And he'll go down after pushing this up to the 29. Kate, one thing I learned from the late, great Mike Leach is, yeah, the system was called Air Raid, but it wasn't just attacking downfield. His philosophy, and it played out right there, is you have to attack every inch of the field, both vertically and horizontally, without routes or in routes, just like that. All right, Kate, thanks very much. Back to you and Brock in a bit. But first, time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. We're accustomed to seeing strong quarterback play. We got that in the first half from Justin Herbert. He threw a first quarter touchdown pass, then two more in the second quarter, a three touchdown half. And he may just be getting started. As always, a hat tip to coach for his hard work during the break, as we're happy to welcome you all back to the start of our third quarter. Well, if you love high-scoring games, no doubt you have been glued to your television so far. And no signs of slowing down as we begin our second half. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. The visitors, ready for their next series, let out on offense by their quarterback. And this is some quality film review right here. Look at this. Couple of touchdowns. Good amount of yards, too. He's been moving them down the field like only he can. Putting together quite the game for himself in the process. Get this drive started. First and ten. Setting up a throw. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop it. And the 
big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. I'm not sure that deficit's going anywhere anytime soon. If anything, this is a defense that sees their offense creating not a ton of separation on the board, knowing they've got to shoulder the load. And sacks like that go a long ways towards doing it. They really need some chunk yardage here on second down. Another try following the sack. Okonkwo brings it in. And this is pushed ahead for a gain of five. Christian Fulton the one to bring him down. That can be a hopeless feeling when you fire a curl route right into zone coverage perfectly like that. Unless that curl happens to be right next to where one of your guys is sitting, that pass can come in there and there's nothing this defense can do. Third and long for him here. Pass taken in by Pollard. And he's got a decent gain before being brought down. Translatable skills. That's what you call it. So effective as a runner, but those same traits that make him a great runner, adept at getting those yards, well, he translates it now as a receiver in the open field. They'll send out the punting unit. And he's going to do the honors for the fourth time today. And he finally gets a hold of one here. This is it far. He's got it at the 24. And he found some space to do a little damage there before they bottle him up. This one returned for 11 yards. And they're going to take over possession. So the Chargers start off with good field position as they get ready for first and 10. A give to Dobbins to start the third. Gets it ahead, has about five yards. Amani Hooker with the tackle. Halfway there on first down, that brings up second and five. That is just a good, solid run right there. I know, that's pretty basic commentary, but sometimes football can be basic. It keeps you on schedule. That kind of yards per carry, and you move the sticks. On second down, here's Dobbins. And he's brought down for a loss. What was supposed to move the chains or at least make third down easier to handle instead? Well, did the exact opposite here, Kate. It now makes this third down a whole lot trickier to figure out. Let's see what they draw up on this third and seven. Tight end in motion left. On third down, Herbert. This finds the chart complete. And they'll make the stop up at the 46-yard line. Give him eight yards on the play. And it brings up an L.A. first down. New set of downs for him from the 46. Dobbins trying the right side. They're working a couple of yards past the line. Monty Hooker with the tackle. Two on the pickup there, and it's going to be second and eight. Again, they'll run with Dobbins. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. His goal's pretty clear, Kate. Crash forward and then crash inside. Set that edge, but if you can come inside and bury that runner before it gets started, all the better. Here's a nickel look by the Titans. Third down. Shotgun snap to Herbert. Hurst there to grab it. They get an even 10 on that play. And the Chargers will have a first. Kate, when you watch the combine, you'll watch guys try to make this throw. And without chemistry, it's so hard to execute. That was picture perfect. That's a QB and receiver on the same page because that route, that deep out to the field, that takes a, just a different level of connectedness. They'll run on first down with Dobbins. Cuts it to the right sideline. 
And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. And they get 38 out of the play. And that gives them first and goal. Kate, that's the type of run that shines the light well on him as a runner, of course. But you got to give a lot of credit to everybody else. Those skill guys, when you have an outside run, they got to do their job. Not just the big boys up front, not just the running backs. That takes everyone on the perimeter blocking to get a big run like that. Big play got him to the doorstep, Brock. Four more yards now in goal to go. Dobbins. We'll take it in. Touchdown, Los Angeles. The Chargers push their lead further to start the half. J.K. Dobbins with the touchdown. Well, in a close game, they needed somebody to make that type of play. Now it pushes their lead to a couple of scores and makes a comeback that much more difficult. You know, Kate, their offense did its part and padded the lead. Now it's up to this defense to make this two-score lead hold up and carry it across the finish line. Dicker on now for the PAT. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Chargers double their lead to 14. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. On the return, here comes Spears. The return manages to get just beyond the 30. The visitors, then receiver Calvin Ridley back out again on offense. And he finds himself across an important benchmark for yards this season after that last drive. He stayed pretty busy this season, and the numbers show just that. They've got first down from the 31. They'll start this one on the ground with Pollard. And he's brought down after a nice run and some extra effort. Good rip on first down. That brings up second and two. Hey, look, Kate. You can't just ask one tackler to go mano y mano and stop this guy. You've got to have the cavalry coming. One guy makes a hit, the others are there to clean up and pile on because one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to run right through you. From the 39. Left side cut by Ridley. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. Football on that 47-yard line, first down. Now it's Pollard. And his effort results in maybe two yards, but nothing more. If there's ever a play we could call garden variety in the NFL, <laughs> I think we just saw it right there. That's an uneventful run and a pretty sound stop there defensively. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Pass play now. Has him on the quick hitter. And he reaches midfield and starts driving into Chargers territory. Extra defender in the secondary now for the Chargers. Third down coming. Back to throw now. Gets it to him on the screen. Still has some space inside the 35. And they're going to haul him down a step before the 30, right at the 31. He picks up 15 on the play. And the Titans will have a first down. At that down and distance, this group was pretty confident the screen would get him enough yards for the first, and it did. And so long as it keeps working like that, I bet you it'll be a go-to play for them when they need it the next time. They've got first down from the 31. Here's the give to Pollard. And he gets him around six there. Sent to the ground by Khalil Mack. 
He landed six on the play, bringing up second and four. That's what I call a rhythm starter right there. The offenses love execution and plays like that on first down, Kate, because now that playbook is wide open. All options on the table for second down. Putting the tight end in motion. Second and four. Short throw is dropped. This one's incomplete. The intended target was Calvin Ridley. And now they need to get four on third down. You know, the goal on a lot of these short throws is to simply let the receiver create some yards after the catch. That yak. Well, I think he was thinking about the yak before he actually secured the catch. Shotgun now on third down. This one finds Boyd. And not much doing. He stopped quickly. Here we go. Here's one of those game situations that just puts a smile on my face because I can think from Pop Warner to the NFL, everybody on the field thinking the same thing. Can we go for it? Can we get one more shot as you end up just short on that third down? Don't go. It's Pollard. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Fourth down. Pressure on him. He was not backing down for a second. Nice effort to carry the rock. More importantly, for his offense to get a first down. And they've got themselves another first and ten. Mm, that throw behind his intended target. That play right there, Kate, that just goes to show you, you can't take any completion for granted. Even some of the shortest passes in the game plan. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Running right, here's Pollard. And he'll go down shy the end zone. They mark him at the four. It's a real solid pickup, 12 yards, and it rewards him with a first and goal. A split second, all to get the defense from making a stand right there. It's amazing, man, this game of inches and split-second reactions. A nice bit of burst surge forward for enough to go get that first by a couple before they could finally drag him down. And the receiver's going to take this one on the jet sweep. And he runs it across. Touchdown! The Titans shrinking the lead some in the third. Not sure we can call these gadget plays anymore, partner. Not like we could in the early 2000s, right? Because receivers who can run it, well, they become an important part of many NFL offenses, especially down in the red zone. And that's because the reality you face is there's only so many conventional plays, really. There's only so many reps you can get in during the practice week, so many different opportunities and traditional sets. But when you got an outlier like this, when you got a wide receiver who can run it like a running back, it presents a whole other set of issues for defenses. Point after by Folk is up and good. And the Titans chop the lead in half. It's down to seven. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Here's a return from the seven. And pretty solid field position starting out here, Brock. He's tackled at the 29. The Chargers start getting the ball back as J.K. Dobbins runs out there. And those legs must be tired, but he ain't stopping, Brock. Not with the type of game that he's been having for himself on the ground. They're out and set. First and ten. Working from the gun here. It's Herbert. Finding Hurst. And he'll get it up near the 38-yard line before going down.
Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. Running this with Dobbins. Blast through midfield. And he's finally hauled down at the 43. A 19-yard pickup, and that's going to move the chains. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. Running it again with Dobbins. It is charged towards the line. That's right around three yards. That's the kind of run play that feels like tug of war at field day. <laughs> and you're just not moving the other side. Just a short run. Neither side feels particularly good about it. And we'll move to the next. Second down now, seven to go. Herbert from the gun. Throwing this back in the end zone. That's much too high and out of the end zone. Incomplete. Well, I'll tell you what. What that deflection is all about is following the quarterback's eyes. DB knew where that throw was going. With that intuition, he's able to get a hand on it and send it right out of bounds. No connection on the last play. And now it's third down. Here's Herbert. Jarius Sneed with the INT. And forget the interception. He makes this a pick six touchdown. Went to the old well one too many times, Brock, and this time the defense was ready for it. Now, you make as many catches as he has in this game, you're going to attract some extra attention. Mm -hmm. They knew it was probably going his way in the near future, and they had somebody there waiting for it that time. Folk on now to try the point after. The point after splits the uprights. And the Titans bring it back to even. Well, Brock, hopefully some short memories on offense as they get it right back here on the kickoff after that pick six. This one's fielded at the four-yard line. Returns looking good so far. His return gets him to the 32-yard line before he's taken down. The Chargers are being led back out on offense by Justin Herbert here. And as we can see here, it hasn't been the easiest game for him to operate out there, right? Number of rough moments for him. This defense able to pick him off twice to highlight their performance against him. It's a new set of downs for him at the 32. Herbert back to it after the pick. Chuck there to haul it in. This is ahead for about five. Legereus Sneed there for the stop. Offense to the line for second down. Dobbins gets it off the option. And his drive forward halted after a couple of yards. Tackled there by Jerome Baker. Two yards on the pickup, and that leaves him with third down and three. Going for the first with Dobbins. Has the first and more. Pass midfield. 
And he gets this one down to the 27. How about a big hitter? 34 yards there and a new set of downs. Those unsung heroes, those big guys up front on the O-line, well, let's give them a little love right here, Kate. They don't always get the attention they deserve on a broadcast, but let me tell you, they played a huge role in that big old run. They'll come up first and ten. A play fake. Now Herbert to throw. Able to hit Palmer. Complete. And he's brought down. They're going to mark him at the 14. They get 13 on the pickup. And it brings up an L.A. first down. Sure showed off some mobility on that play. Got outside the pocket and easily found an open man. Offense set for a first and ten. Tight end going in motion here. Working inside the red zone. Flush down. This time they're going to get there and they drop him. And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. That sure ended up being a worst case scenario. Pass rush just kept coming and coming and bearing down. And he was looking for an escape that wasn't there. It's one of those plays in hindsight, Kate, where you really got to understand, I got to cut bait, cut my losses, and avoid such a negative play. Let's see what they dial up on a second and very long. Trying again, following the sack. This one is tipped away and incomplete. Good positioning to make a play on it. That forces third down. I think we're seeing why this defense likes him in coverage. He reacts so well to throws and is even more adept in breaking up those passes. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. Now they'll throw out of the gun. Chargers take a third quarter lead. Let McCockey with a touchdown. Well, this has definitely been a tight one throughout, Brock. So now that they've taken the lead, the question becomes, can they hold on to it? And that question right there is one the defense has to answer. But this sure had the look of a drive where a coaching staff challenged that offense, saying, hey, we need a big drive from you guys right here. And sure enough, that offense delivers. Yeah, no doubt. Dicker on now for the PAT. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Chargers break that tie and now lead by seven. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. Here's Chestnut on the return. This return makes it up to the 25. The offense returning to the field now as we get a look at their wideouts. And I think by this point we can all agree, Brock, that he is not going to be stopped until the clock stops at the end of this game. He just continues to make catches count in this second half. Drive starts out with a first and ten. This is Pollard running left. And he found some running room for a nice game. Call it nine yards. Looks like a first for a moment. It's second and one.
Again, a run with Pollard. Brushes him off with ease. And he'll get it up near the 38-yard line before going down. That goes as a four-yard pickup, and it gets him a first down. I don't know about you, Kate, but he sure made getting that first down look really easy. A lot easier than it's supposed to be for that defense. And I think they'll hear about it when they get to the sidelines. He's got it to him yet again, and that one is caught. It's a great pickup, 16 yards, and now they've got first down. Kate, if there was one throw in the game plan that kept me up at night more than any other, it was an out route versus zone coverage. Because you got to throw with anticipation, but you also got to make sure those defenders' eyes aren't reading you like a book. Football on that 47-yard line, first down. Back now, pressure on its way. Short pass brought in. And out of bounds right at the 40-yard line. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. They give to Pollard from the gun. He's pushed straight ahead, and that's maybe a yard at most. Alohi Gilman up from the secondary for that tackle. Only a yard on the pickup, so that's going to bring them to third down and three. Early movement along the right side. The flag comes out. A costly false start penalty as third down becomes much more difficult to convert as they back it up five. The penalty makes it third and eight here. They're throwing it. And he just gets rid of this one, but unfortunately, that means fourth down coming up. You know, that's an example right there where you just simply got to be on the same page with each other and get both ends of the play right to execute. They want that one back. Punt team on the field. And this is the fifth time he's been called upon today. Mm -mm -mm. This lands deep into the end zone. We're picking things up with the 20 after the touchback. Chance here for one final play before the end of the quarter. Beginning on the ground here with Dobbins. By a man, and now he's in the clear. And they're able to haul him down, and that's going to wrap up this third quarter. A very active quarter for us. Plenty of points in that frame as we reach the end of three. It's Chargers football as they try to hang on to a lead in a close game. It's a new set of downs for him at the 32. Going to the ground again on first. And he's able to manage a couple on that run. That's a pretty good stop on first down. This defense now gets a chance to dictate, and that's what all the great defenses want to do, Kate. They want to dictate it on their terms and not just be reacting to what the offense is always doing. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Herbert now off the play fake. They left him wide open. It's complete. And he flips the field for them before being taken down. The analytics are pretty clear. It's hard to move the ball in this league with short little dinks and dunks. You've got to get the explosive chunk. You've got to get the big play. And that throw to the outside, that gets the job done.
Thinking touchdown here after that big play. We've got first and ten from the red zone. From the red zone now. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. No luck finding his receiver that time. And that'll bring up second down. Well, you certainly want those throws to be automatic. Every team, if you're going to be efficient, you've got to hit those passes in the short to intermediate zone to effectively move the ball in this league. They run the counter with Dobbins. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. You know how we hear about teams and quarterbacks avoid targeting a stud quarterback, just throwing away from him? Well, maybe they should avoid running it anywhere near this guy. He's having no issue stopping these plays cold. And the Titans opting for a 5th DB, a nickel set, third down. Shotgun handoff for Dobbins. And it's a nice game, but still not enough for the first. You know you love some of my buzzwords, kid. I know you do, and this one, this one was about will power. He got the rock a long way from the chains and put his teammates on his back for a heck of a run and a great try at that first down. A big try coming up here for Cameron Dicker. A pretty automatic look for him from the left. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that'll push it to double digits in a two-possession game. It doesn't take a math major, Kate, to realize how important that field goal was. It's now a two-score game really late and puts them in the driver's seat to go and finish this thing with the win. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. On the return, here comes Spears. He stopped on the return at the 27. The visitors are being led back out there on offense by their quarterback. And like we've seen from him before, Brock, he got a good game going early through the air and kept the pressure up from then on. He's still taking it to him now as we work through this second half. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Throwing from the gun here. Hits him on the out route. And he reaches the 35 before going out. I know I could sound like a broken record when I talk about timing and getting the ball out on time and on rhythm, but these outcuts, it is so imperative, and the best of them make it look oh so easy. Second and three now. Looking for a throw here. That's caught. He found some space. And they finally bring him down. But that is a big gain and a new set of downs. They managed 22 on the rip and a first down. Wow. Certainly found the weak spot in the coverage with that catch. Really goes to show they trust every single player, receiver, running back, in that case, tight end, to be a playmaker in this offense. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. Shotgun snap, looking to throw. Makes the grab in bounds, left side. And they've got him down near the red zone at the 22. They get 22 on that one. And that'll be a Tennessee first down. That's just a gorgeous corner route by the wide receiver. I bet you a fine, Kate. In the annals of football history, the best corner route runners as receivers are also the best slant runners, the best post runners, because it's all about change of direction, and that was put on display right there. There's no negatives ever on a great sheet for a completion, but that's one of those situations. If you're going to take a risk and throw an out route, you'd sure like to see a little bit more yardage gained. Second down now, seven to go. From the gun, they go with Pollard. And he doesn't get this one very far. Down to only about the 18. Just one yard on the play, though. That leaves him with third down and six to go. A 
out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Oh, it could way too much on that one, Brock. Over the end zone and out. Just something off in the rhythm of their passing game on that one. Time to recalibrate and keep throwing it to get back into rhythm. So the Titans left with a fourth down, and we're going to see Nick Folk after the try. This is a 35-yard look from the right hash. Flying down the heart of the lane, and it's good! And it pulls him back within one score here in the fourth. This is a case of, well, just get what you can on the way out the door, Kate. It's already out of reach. Just take the three, let your kicker get some points, and make it a hair closer in the box score. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Returning it from the four. And this drive will start inside the 25. The Chargers and this running back headed back out for a new series. And as some running lanes have closed, he's just found some new ones. Continuing to hit this defense. More good numbers well into this second half. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And he has enough room to gain about four. We'll pause now for an injured player. And it looks like he's worse for wear after handling that last carry. Second and six coming up here. Play action now for Herbert. He's got a man left. And this one doesn't go far. Chance to move the chains here on third and four. Now Herbert to throw. And it's incomplete, and that's going to bring up fourth down. I'll tell you this, Kate. That's, that's where you've got to be on the same page with one another and get both ends of the play right to execute, both the protection and ultimately completing that ball. They certainly want that play call back. The Chargers lined up in punt formation. And he sends this away. Definitely his best kick of the game thus far. And he's brought down before the return gets far. The kicking team got downfield quickly there. He didn't manage much on the return. And the Titans will get set to take over. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Spears running behind center. And he'll come up with a gain of three on the run up the middle. Hey, not a bad play by any means, but there's room for more, and they know it. Second down now, seven to go. From the 29. And the coverage is too good there. Didn't find the throw that he was confident in, so just throws it away. Third down coming up. Here's the throw. And he made a bid for midfield there, but stopped on his own side at the 49. 
They pick up 20 yards there. And the Titans will have a first down. Well, that one was drawn up and delivered beautifully, efficiently. If it's not circled on the call sheet already, you better believe it is now. First and ten from a yard shy of midfield. They send a man in motion. Trying to throw here out of the gun. And he just hucks this one away. Wasn't going to risk a throw or force something. It brings up second down. You know, Kate, that was one of those situations where you hear a quarterback have a clock, right? You know, and you end up time in the pocket. But then it was like, okay, time is running out, and I got to do something. He did not force a throw and risk a pick. Instead, he just got rid of it and cut his losses. Second and ten now. He'll get this complete to Westbrook Akine. And he'll have it down to the 44-yard line. All plays on the table here for third and three. Up the middle, here goes Pollard. And they make the stop, we're going to say it about the 37-yard line. They get six and a first down as well. I don't know what it is, Kate, but I love third down runs. I really do. I know the receivers don't always like it because money down, they want the ball. But a third down run for a first down can be so demoralizing to that defense. Hands it to the receiver here in motion. Oh, look at this sweep. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. Mm, 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 mm. That is teaching tape for a linebacker. Read, react, and finish. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. Dropping back to throw. Pass taken in by Pollard. That chunk worth a nice 21 yards. And that'll be a Tennessee first down. Got to be a pretty good actor. Got to be pretty good at selling to that defense. Now that's a drop back pass. When you get a big play on the screen like that, boy, it's choreography by everybody on that offense. Up to the line, and they're set. First and 10. Shotgun snap, they're gonna throw. Has his man, it's Ridley. And he's gonna be taken down near the eight yard line. It's a double digit gain, 10 yards, and now they've got first and goal. Shotgun snap, looking to throw. Drops. Lockett isn't holding up. They're able to drop it. And that sack going to cost them some yardage. Well, now this is certainly going to make second and goal considerably more difficult. He could have gotten rid of it to avoid the big loss. But give some credit here to the defense as well. That pressure was suffocating. It's going to make it a more difficult now second and goal situation. Going the wrong way. It's second and goal now back at the 12th. Another try following the sack. He brings it in. And this one stopped at the three-yard line. Buckle up. It's third and goal. Looking to the air here. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Tennessee! The Titans now trail by just a point in the fourth. Tony Pollard with the touchdown. His second scoring catch of the game. So they punch it in for six, Brock, and now a conversion away from tying this game back up. This one just has the feel, doesn't it? The makings of a one-score game in the fourth quarter that could go either way.
So a chance to tie it up again here in the fourth. The kick is good, so this game now hinging on every possession as we're tied up in the fourth. Stonehouse now to kick this one away. On the return, here comes Davis. And look at this return. Races past midfield. Hits the 20. To the house, touchdown LA. The Chargers take a fourth quarter lead. The advent of a new style of kickoff in 2024 created all sorts of new strategies to generate big returns. And Brock here, we see their own design executed to perfection to spring them for six. Now, I don't know if we've seen a rule change that has invigorated special teams coaches, head coaches, all the coaches, yep. as much as this one did this offseason, each looking for their own wrinkle to try to throw in there and do what we just saw, break it the length of the field for six big points. Dicker tacks on the extra point. And the Chargers break that tie and now lead by seven. What do you think, Brock? Can we get dueling kick return touchdowns, huh? Let's find out. The kick is away. On the return, here comes Spears. He stopped on the return at the 27. The offense being led back out by its quarterback as they get geared up for their next possession. They're out and set, first and ten. Trying the inside handoff to Pollard. And he's brought down for a loss. That's got to be so frustrating for the running. You're fighting the good fight. He even ripped through a tackle to stay afloat. But the blocking can't buy you enough time or room to even get back to the line of scrimmage. All right, here we go. Second down. Now looking to throw. Has him on the quick hitter. And he's down after getting this up to the 41. Give him 15 yards on the pickup there. And the Titans will have a first down. Sure nice to see them looking for their tight ends in the passing game. Such great size to have out there. It really forces defenses to try to find a way to defend them along with everybody else. First and 10 from the 41. On the ground, Pollard. And he's gonna work his way almost to midfield. That stopped at the 48. Call it seven yards and now they'll have second down and three. to Pollard on the option. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. That's a play that won't pop on the stat sheet, but the players and coaches won't forget about it. I promise you that. The coaches will file that one away the next time. They really need to pick up a few yards. First and 10. Ball set up at the 48. Right back to Pollard. And he's tackled with markers down. This one should be on the defense.
Pretty easy call to make. He lined up offsides, and now he gets a talking to from his coach. A bit jumpy across the way there, and that halves the distance ahead of him on first down. Back to throw. Into the hands of Okonkwo. And he's able to reach the 40 on that play. Well, that's a modest little drag route, but if you ever just need a safe, short gain on the throw, that's a go-to route to target. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Hand off, running right, Pollard. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. Kate, it's amazing how fast these guys are on the field and how fast your fortunes can turn. Second and short run, you're feeling good about yourself. But with a negative play, well, now comes a critical third down. Here they come. This is third and five. Back to throw it. Wow, wide open here. Complete. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. That one hits for 30. And that'll be a Tennessee first down. If only every completion could get that kind of result. That's good enough to knock a defense flat on its back. What a spot for a big play, huh, Brock? It has him well into the red zone now with first and ten. Running back sent in motion. Working inside the red zone. Touchdown, Tennessee! All right, so the offense does its job, Brock. Now they need their defense to give them a chance to overcome that big deficit. The momentum in the building's clearly changed. We can feel it here in the booth, but you're right. It's now up to the defense to make a stop and give them a chance. The kick is good, so this game now hinging on every possession as we're tied up in the fourth. Stonehouse now to kick this one away. Starting from the five. And this return gets to the 30 before he stopped. Hey, maybe in the end this return just gets lost in the shuffle when we recap things, Kate. But you surrender a lead in the fourth quarter and you feel that momentum being lost. That's exactly what excellent special teams do. They turn it around. It's why that third phase is coached and coached and coached, because you never know when your opportunity may arise. What a great return to begin this drive. Here's the first give to Gus Edwards. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. You, know, you call that first down running play. You don't always expect to get those kind of yards, but they'll take that every single time. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning left for them. We've got first and ten. Herbert from the gun. Finding Hurst. And good tackle, but a flag is down, likely against the defense. Always a point of emphasis, right? Protecting the quarterbacks, and that play is going to draw the flag every time. Running it after the penalty. 
And the middle holds. They don't get anything on the run. The rookie from Texas there on the tackle. It's the two-minute warning here in L.A. Chargers pushing to get within range for a game winner. Second and ten. Need to get some positive yardage here. Shotgun snap to Herbert. Ooh, would have been a big gainer if they connected, but they could not. Instead, third down coming up. They don't complete a high percentage of these, but even the incomplete deep shots serve a purpose. It keeps the defense honest, knowing if they overcommit close, they could get burned. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Running behind center with Edwards. And he's going to fight his way down to the 35-yard line. No surprises here. Defense quick to stop that clock. We've got 153 left in this game. A big try coming up here for Cameron Dicker. This a 52-yard attempt from the left hash. It has enough leg, and it's good from deep. And late in the fourth, they have grabbed the lead. That's called getting his job done, Kate, drilling it right through. And now they're in position to win this game. Now it's on some of those guys who are out there with them on the kick, those defenders, to hang on to this lead to give them the win. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. On the return, here comes Spears. He stopped on the return at the 27. This offense headed back to the field, led by their receiver. And he has kept his pace up in the second half. His quarterback more than happy to keep throwing it his way, considering what he's been able to do with his looks all game. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Throwing now. Caught by Westbrook Akine. And he'll get it out to the 34 before he's tracked down. Titans in the hurry up trying to get this playoff fast. Here he is to throw. Boyd hauls it in. And he's brought down after a nice gain and a first down. Titans in the hurry up trying to get this playoff fast. Now to throw. Short pass brought in. And he'll cross the 50 and start pushing onto the opposing side of the field. Tennessee calling its second timeout now. Still one more in their pocket to use. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. To throw. pass on the throw to the right. You really want those throws to be like clockwork for your offense. Every team needs to hit passes in that short to intermediate range to effectively move the ball. No connection on the last play, and now it's third down. Looking to throw it. To the sideline, complete, and he's got the first down as he stays in bounds. Kid, I promise you, if you and I got to travel the country and watch young quarterbacks, even really good high school quarterbacks, out routes are the hardest to complete. Slants, goes, fades, all that stuff comes somewhat naturally, but really trusting yourself to throw that out route, that comes with time and experience. 
to the line for a new set of downs. Only a lone timeout at their disposal. Back to throw. Oh, no. The ball is loose. Disaster averted. Thank goodness. He covers it up himself. The time's still running off here. They got to go. They really need some chunk yardage here on second down. He'll look to throw it. That's brought in by Westbrook Akine. And the tackle's made just beyond midfield at the 48. This really isn't a route designed for a lot of yards, Kate. You're just trying to get a small handful and move on to the next down. Stay in rhythm. But anytime you can work some magic after the catch and stretch it out, those are welcome bonus yards. Trying to set this up quick. He's back to throw. And even on third down, he sees no choice other than to get rid of it. Not the play they wanted. It's going to be fourth down. You know, in the NFL, offensive-minded teams would call it a perfect Friday. They don't want the ball to hit the ground once. And especially on these short to intermediate throws, got to count on those being efficient and effective. Here he goes. Got to have this on fourth down. This is for the ball game. Deflected. Oh, they couldn't bring it off the tip drill. Oh, they had the chance they wanted, Brock. But no, that's how this one's going to end. So the Chargers come away with the win in this one. And finally, Brock, they can exhale. And take a few breaths, because uh, I don't imagine any of them were breathing easy during that one with how close this game was. Them or us? Or both? <laughs> all of us. <laughs> yeah, D, is, all of the above. It, it is so hard, Kate, to match the adrenaline surge they feel right now and that they felt at every major turn throughout the second half. There's just something about a close game, the intensity that's there in every moment that you love to experience as a player and that you hope in all these moments you can execute so you're the one celebrating and riding that wave of emotion.